We are almost certainly going into a recession in 2023, and that has a lot of investors scared. Today, I'm talking to you about the SCHD, Schwab Dividend Growth ETF, and I'm gonna tell you why I think it's the best ETF to own through the 2023 recession. It comes down to three things. Capital appreciation, so that's overall growth, 3% plus dividend, and then dividend safety. So in the next five minutes, I'm gonna to explain to you why SCHD is gonna be better than VU, QILD, and a lot of other popular ETFs for the 2023 recession. All right, first of all, I like to see a history of outperformance, right? What we're looking at is a chart of SCHD, VOO, and QILD, all including their dividends since 2011, which is when SCHD started. You can see that SCHD by far is the top performing, up 311%. VOO is up 281%. And then QILD, even with that nice, you know, 10%, 15% plus dividend is only up 62%, and that includes its dividends. Now, sure, QILD started in 2013, but it's not even close. And even before this drawdown, and, and even before 2020, it wasn't even close to performing like SCHD or VU. So QILD is not even in the question for me. And what's amazing is that SCHD, you can see it right here, and this is the, some of the top performing ETFs that Morningstar rates, is actually has one of the top five total year returns, even compared to some of these riskier, more volatile growth ETFs. You can see the Russell 1000 growth, Schwab US large cap growth, Vanguard mega cap growth. These are all great funds and they've done good over the last five years, up almost 12% a year. But these aren't good for a lot of people who don't like big drawdowns, because you can see down 22.7%, down 24%, down 25%, and then here's SCHD, only down 7.5%. All right, so let's jump into a little bit about how SCHD works, right? Got an expense ratio of 0.06%, which is right down there. You'll find some Vanguard ones that are lower, but again, for the outperformance that you get with SCHD, I'm happy to pay a little bit more expense ratio. It has 43.7 billion in total assets, and it is a large, cap value dividend paying ETF. All right, so the nuts and bolts of this fund and what I love about it is it has a process that it follows. It's not doing some risky strategy. It's not just up to the whim of some manager. It follows the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, which features 100 stocks that have paid dividends for at least 10 consecutive years and boast financial health to continue their streak. Most of the top holdings are industry fixtures like Pepsi and Pfizer. Fund fo it focuses on fundamentals, which promotes durable yield as stocks on firm financial footing are well positioned to continue paying dividend policies. Also allows the fund to tap into the quality factor, which has historically been tied to market beating performance. The fund's profitability measures like return on invested capital comfortably exceed the Russell 1000 value index, its category benchmark. Dividend oriented companies with healthy balance sheets tend to be more insulated from the market's movements, so this fund usually strikes a defensive stance. It takes a modified approach, limiting each stock's weight to 4%, so you're not gonna have any huge positions, which can be risky, and then no sector will be more than 25%. Okay, and here's the thing, it's not just gonna own you know crazy, risky, dividend-paying stocks. It excludes REITs, and it filters out stocks that fall short of liquidity requirements or have market cap smaller than 500 million, or have not paid dividends for at least 10 consecutive years. And then it basically ranks the stocks and goes from there. And it's important to cover the process because that talks about, it goes to the safety of the fund, right? It's not just some crazy fund. Now, here's a look at the portfolio, right? And then we're gonna get into each company and some of the dividend safety ratings, as well as this dividend growth. That's kind of the key factor here. But we can see it is all basically large cap value. And then the price to earnings ratio, and this is why this is such a great fund to own, I think through a recession, it's not, it doesn't have a super high price to earnings ratio and it owns important companies that have good, strong cash flows that are gonna maintain their cash flows most likely during a recession. 13.78 price to earnings ratio, a dividend yield, again, I talked about this, 3.52% and it's growing fast every single year. Long-term earnings growth of 7.6%, sales growth of 7.7%, and then cash flow growth of 6.10%. That's how it's gonna maintain paying this dividend, right? And it's a pretty balanced fund. It's got, it has 99 companies in it, which is less than a lot of ETFs, but still it doesn't have too much concentrated in the top 10, 42%, which is a decent amount, but it's not overly concentrated, which is good for people. Okay, and here's the type of companies that you're gonna have part ownership of if you own this ETF. Merck, Pfizer, IBM, Broadcom, Home Depot, Amgen, Cisco Systems, PepsiCo, Texas Instruments, Lockheed Martin. 
pretty much every single company here, if you think about them and, and how much people need their different products and services or use them, or even for Pepsi where it's like people at the grocery store, they're still gonna need groceries, they're still gonna need food. People, unfortunately for their health, are still gonna drink a lot of soda, right? And actually they tend to move down in price factor and so they might move from more expensive organic type foods into some of the snacks and you know even unhealthy stuff that Pepsi has. So again, this isn't a health uh, episode, but it's just you know Coke and Pepsi tend to be do fantastic through recessions or not. Uh, Home Depot, people are going to continue needing things for their homes. Broadcom, this is in chips, right? Uh, Merck, Pfizer, pharmaceutical or medical companies, right? I mean that stuff is going to continue to do just fine through a session. Not that it won't go down, but these companies are not going anywhere. And so what I've done here is I have put every single one of these top 25 holdings into this little tracker here on Simply Safe Dividend that tracks the safety of the dividend. The way that SCHD, the fund, pays a dividend is by all of the companies it owns paying a dividend, right? Right here, you can see through the things that they measure like payout ratio and free cash flow and different types of things like that, the dividend safety is very high in most of the top 25 holdings, which is where most of the fund's assets are. So a 99 safety rating, I mean, you can get all the way down here. And basically out of the top 25, there's only one, two, three, four out of the top 25 that are borderline. And that's US Bank Corp, Altria, Newmont, and Valero Energy, right? So all in all, this has a very safe dividend. This is what's pretty cool is that these individual companies here all have pretty strong five-year dividend growth track records. And I'm gonna show you just how much income and growth and cash flow that can turn into over a long period of time. So the slowest out of the top 25 dividend growth over the last five years has been Verizon with 2% on average. And here's the metrics we like to see, right? Dividend growth streak and then uninterrupted dividend streak. So uh, the top one is 3M with a 63-year dividend growth streak. Then you've got Coca-Cola, Altria, Illinois Tool Works, Kimberly Clark, Pepsi, ADP, you know, all of those were above 47 years of dividend growth. And then if we look at uninterrupted dividend streak, Coke has paid a dividend for 100 straight years, Kimberly Clark, 87, 3M, 63, Texas Instruments, 60, and the lowest out of the top 25 is a dividend, uninterrupted dividend streak of six years. And so this is also what we wanna look at. During the 0709 recession, how, what did they do with their dividends? we can see most of them maintained or increased their dividends. Then there were a few that cut, right? And the ones that cut were Valero, Allstate, US Bank Corp, Pfizer, Prudential, Broadcom. So mostly financial companies that cut their dividend. All right, now that's not to say that a stock's not gonna go down during a recession, right? Or this fund's not gonna go down during a recession. Uh, they certainly did, but most of them recovered just fine, right, eventually. And 08, 09, 07 to 09 was a very, very bad recession. So you can see some of them were down, you know, um, Newmont, Amgen, Altria, IBM were down in the 20% the range or less. Um, but then we did have some that were down a lot, right? And again, you're gonna see mostly these financial companies because 08, 09 was very financial focused, but then Valero Energy, just because of when depressions or recessions happen, um, that, that really hurts energy type companies, right? And then uh, Prudential, which is another financial company. So what's so awesome about this fund, right? Well. This is a little scenario I've built with a $97,000 balance. So say you have a $100,000 portfolio, which is aspirational for some people. I totally understand that, but we're just using it for this example. Right now, it would give you annual average income or annual income of $3,329, which doesn't seem like that much. Again, 3.4% dividend yield. This is what has me so excited about this. This 13.7% average dividend growth over the last five years from the dividend. And so what we could do is we can go down to this income forecast and it gives us a little scenario of how much this income is gonna grow over time, right? This is just dividend income. It doesn't take into account the share price appreciation, but it's basing it off of 10% growth per year, which it's actually been faster than that. It's been 13.7. We are saying that we're reinvesting this because we don't need the money right now. So you get a 3% boost to your dividend. So that means that the growth rate is 13% per year. In this scenario, we're saying we're doing $500 a month, which is a $6,000 annual contribution. So that extra money is gonna yield $205 per year right now, which is going right back into the fund. And so what you can see is that at 13% right per year, right now it's only $3,300 a year. But in, by 2027, you've got $7,400 a year, 2032, $15,000 a year. And by 2042, so 20 years from now, 
$55,000 just in dividend income. And again, that does not account for the growth of the shares, which the share price growth has been strong as well. All right, I wanna know how you're feeling. Let me know in the comments. Are you nervous? Are you trying to invest more? Are you just holding? Are you thinking about selling? Let me know what you're doing and let me know what you think about SCHD or if there's any other ETFs that you think are better. Tell me down in the comments.